Good morning and welcome Brownsville at the beach. So good to have you with us this morning and trust you've had a great 4th of July and uh, hope you got a good parking space because I hear things are already packed out there at the beach in uh, Santa Rosa Island. And so welcome to church this morning on the 4th. And I'm going to share a word with you in just a moment about uh, our nation and the burden on my heart. But before I do that, let me just talk about Branded by Fire. Branded by Fire starts next Sunday with pre-Sunday service with Pat Schatzline. He will be here in the morning, and uh, then Monday night, Eddie James is going to be leading worship. He and his whole crew will be here, and then after that, Nate Chatsline will be speaking. He is the youth pastor at the house in Dallas, Texas with Micah Berto, one of the largest youth groups in the nation. And then Tuesday evening will be Jacob Peterson um, from Radiant Church in Tampa, and he is a former youth pastor here, an intern, and uh, got touched by God at Branded by Fire Act actually quite a few years ago, and now in full-time in ministry. And then on Wednesday evening, Jordan Morris will be here, Steve Hill's son-in-law, and I believe he and Kelsey both will be here, and uh, looking forward to seeing them Wednesday evening. Thursday night, our own youth pastor, Seth, is going to be speaking, and all week long, Brandon and Alyssa Holt will be with us, and it's going to be an amazing week. And for the leaders, youth leaders and pastors, uh, our own pastor, Pastor Thomas there at Gulf Breeze is going to be uh, coordinating the sessions for leaders Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning while the youth are here in the sanctuary, and then the uh, youth pastors will be gathering, and it's going to be an incredible week. So what I want to encourage you to do today for Branded by Fire is sow a seed. So Pastor Thomas, if you would uh, receive an offering for Branded by Fire sometime today, that would be great. And uh, we do not charge for this conference, and it is powerful. We have usually seven to ten teen challenge groups here, and uh, we just make it affordable at zero cost. They have the expenses of coming and staying and meals and hotels and so on, but uh, we're just excited to have Branded by Fire and not have to charge a registration. Well, let me get into the Word this morning because I'm really excited about it as well as burdened about it. It's been on my heart for some time now when we started talking about the 4th of July being on Sunday. I don't think it's a coincidence that that's the case and that we have the 4th today. The need for a third great awakening is so strong, and I'm praying for that, and I'm believing it. The phrase that's in our Constitution is one nation under God. In our Pledge of Allegiance, which the kids are going to be doing here this morning, one nation under God. God is part of the foundation and fiber of our nation. And anyone who thinks otherwise, that it's that separation of church and state, doesn't understand how this nation came together. There are two nations in the history of humanity that I believe were founded by God. The first one's Israel. And the second is that of America, the United States of America. And that we have these secular principles. No, separation of church and state, wrong. All men are created equal, and this is what it says, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Some people say we're freedom from religion. No, 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 no. It's freedom of religion, not freedom from freedom of. It was founded. It's not meant to not have religion or faith in God, but a freedom to express your belief in God, your way, your convictions. Why do you think we have so many denominations, so many different churches? Because everybody is unique, but we still can have unity. The first settlers that came left England, Europe, France, Spain for religious freedom. Let me share with you some quotes of our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. Here is my creed. I believe in one God, the creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that he ought to be worshiped. Thomas Jefferson, now I will avow that I then believe and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God and that those principles of liberty. George Washington, it should be our highest glory to add the more distinguished character of Christianity. John Adams, 
I have examined all religions, and the result is that the Bible is the best book in the world. That's a great place to say amen. Inscribed on the Supreme Court building is the Ten Commandments. Scripture, the same Supreme Court that said, you know what, we should take Scripture out of schools, has Scripture engraved on its building. Above the door of the House and the Senate, it says, in God we trust. Inscribed in the Washington Monument, in God we trust. In the Lincoln Memorial, Psalm 19.9 talks about the decree of, decrees of the Lord are firm. The first great awakening started in 1741, 35 years before the Declaration of Independence. Settling the 13 colonies, religious freedom was part of it. More and more coming to this nation. Realized there was money to be made here and the economy flourished. People took their eyes off of God and set their eyes on monetary values. The first arrivers then started having children. They became prejudiced against those that weren't born here that were still immigrating. Violence was breaking out. New York City was the center of major gangs back in 1740, late 1730s. The movie Gangs of New York was based in that time period. Corruption. It was all about money. Attendance to church, they say, had dropped to less than 5% at that time. There was a need for a great awakening. Jonathan Edwards, on July 8, 1741, preached a message, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It was at this town of Enfield in Connecticut. They say people were shaking in the pews. Suddenly there was an eruption and there was a move of God in that place. People became white-knuckled as they hung onto the pews in front of them. This move of God, this first great awakening, turned this nation back to God even before it became an independent country. Benjamin Franklin, a citizen of Philadelphia, built a stadium to house services for the first great awakening for George Whitfield, one of the speakers, one of the preachers of the great awakening. And the population of Philadelphia at that time was only 18,000. He built it for more than every person that was in the city. Wesley, Whitfield, and Edwards all preached the word and the truth. And out of that movement of the Great Awakening, out of that birthing became this nation where it said, you know what, there's more for us as a country. And they came together for the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia to talk about the Declaration of Independence, to do something. And they started to gather that first time in the early parts of the late, mid to late parts of June of 1776, and the first day, everything was just a mess. There were, there were thick factions here and splits over here and arguments over there. The whole First Continental Congress was a disaster. And George Washington got up the second day, and he said, you know, the only way we're going to come together is if we pray before we start. And they passed a motion because everybody agreed that prayer was the only way this nation was going to be formed and agreement was going to happen. And so they began the day in prayer. And they did every day for the next three days. We're all familiar with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. We're all familiar with the previous slide. Let's take a look at that one. Where they signed it. We see that painting, we recognize it, and it's a famous painting of the signing. But the one we don't see very often is the next one, where they're on their knees praying, which happened before the signing. So critical. So important to realize this nation was birthed in prayer. The date now is 1801. America's thriving economically. They've won the Revolutionary War. Industrialization of the North is happening and plantations of the South are flourishing. However, the South is flourishing with millions of slaves. There's division. There's polarization. Slavery is dividing this nation. And then in 1801, Cane Ridge, Kentucky, a move of God starts. And God moves out in the 
rural part of Cane Ridge, Kentucky, and the Second Great Awakening, the camp meeting movement began, similar to that of the Old Testament tabernacle. Charles Finney, other preachers gathered, the holiness movement, the Methodist church, the Salvation Army, the Wesleyans, the Free Methodists, the Nazarenes, all were birthed out of this movement of camp meetings. And September 22nd, 1862, comes the Emancipation Proclamation from Abraham Lincoln that everyone is free. And the best estimate and census of all is there were three and a half million slaves at that time in the South. Many call President Abraham Lincoln not only one of the greatest, if not the greatest president, but he was the savior of this nation that was being torn apart. The Declaration of Independence, a great document for the foundation. The Emancipation Proclamation, the salvation of this nation. I see the birth, I see the saving. I want to tell you this morning, there is a need for a third great awakening. I look at the division that we have now in our country and think about this. Politically, never more divided. Racially, never more an issue. Financially, the haves and the have-nots. Geographically, morally, spiritually, we have horrible division and we need to unite and come together and I am believing and praying and calling for a third great awakening. What happened in the first and second were totally different than each other, and so I believe this third great awakening is going to be different again. For us today, it's going to be necessary, but we're on that same precipice again. And I want to call on our God, our Lord, our Creator, our Savior, Jesus, to bring his mighty hand upon us as a nation and see a third great awakening start now. I hunger for it. I long for it. I'm burdened for it. I call for it. And I call and ask you for it as well. I'm going to lead in prayer and then turn it back to Pastor Thomas and for you to continue in prayer there at Brownsville at the beach. But let's pray together right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for a third great awakening. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would move your mighty hand upon us and let us see and sense and call forth that there would be a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Let it start with us right here, right now. And we thank you, Father, as we continue to call upon you in Jesus' name, amen. All right.